Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And I recently picked up this set of Craftsman hex wrenches, both millimeter or metric and SAE at a Lowe's. It was on a blowout sale. I think it was around 20 bucks down from like 35. They make a V series that they sell for like 55. But the reason I got it uh, is basically my, I've got several sets of the Craftsman in different places, but these things, these are one of the early ones um, and they, are hard to read, and I actually do often look for the size. Um, I'm gonna talk about the different kinds of hexes and why you know you may want something like that. But what I was after at Lowe's was I knew that they had a bunch of green craftsman tools like this. It's not quite the same as a snap-on green, but it's it's in there. And this was on a blowout sale, so I went in actually um, or I, I saw this and started shopping for tools then. Um, uh, more on that one later. But anyway, um, what I, kind of the theme of this is, is a personal hand-me-down tools. And I've had these forever. Um, I've had these for quite a while. I've had these going on probably 30 years. Um, and I just use a few sizes mostly. In fact, when I got this, like you can see there's a nine in there, a nine millimeter. I, that's usually not even included in any set right now. In fact, a seven is pretty rare too. But um, back in the day when this thing was out there uh, for sale, this uh, it, they just had all the sizes because I guess we didn't know what we'd need. And this also has the ball ends. But I have a you know set of snap-ons. Um, snap-on makes it very difficult to read. This is like early web, <laughs> like Netscape back in the 1990s when people had you know, like blue text on a black background or black text on a blue background made it impossible to read. But anyway, these are the T-handled ones. Very comfortable to use if you need a T-handle. These don't fit in a lot of places though, or it's too big to, uh, to spin around. Um, but anyway, the hand-me-down tool idea is as I get another set, maybe this now stays in my shop or, uh, you know, in, a, in one of my garages, and then these things get moved into, say, a toolbox or into another location where they don't get used near as much. Not thrown away because it comes in handy. And actually these, um, what I've done with some of these is I've literally just gotten a two by four and drilled holes at an angle in the side of it and then just slid all these down in the two by four and then I had my own, uh, my own case for them. And then um, I could just uh, screw the 2x4 into a wall, and then I've got my own set. But anyway, I use these things all the time. These are really convenient, um, but I also think there's still room for the design. Uh, anyone who uses these knows, you know, a lot of times you'll drop it in and then you'll spin it. Now, this is off-center. That's why it flew out of my hand. It's, as you see, um, you know, this obviously weighs a lot more. I think there's, a, there's room for a new design. And it, it basically grabs uh, or, or leverages the ability to spin it, which means this has to be balanced up here. And if this, this is balanced, then you can spin it easily, but it's not balanced, so it flies out. The other thing is uh, really spending time figuring out what the optimum spinning is. Um, because, you know, the, this one's a lot longer and you only use the end. This is all just the, the extension shaft. That's all that is. This is where all the business takes place. Um, so it can be, you know, obviously any length you want, um, but I'm trying to figure out where, where's the most precise uh, spinning and then build that, make this symmetrical, made in USA, uh, make this symmetrical, and put markings everywhere on it. So no matter where you look, you can tell what size it is. Um, and then maybe even have something up here that actually gives you a better grip. Um, and that's sometimes the small ones, they spin really well, but you know, if you can increase the size or something, maybe that'll help. Um, it could move, it could come off if you needed the actual uh, length. So there could be something up there. Um, and then the T-handles, they all seem about fine. I haven't really noticed. I know in the V-series, they've actually fancied it up a little bit. Snap-ons are huge if you want to hang that. Um, but anyway, I think there's there's room to, to evolve this to make these even better. Um, so why do you want something like this? Well, when I did the video on this, there was a lot of 
Um, a lot of comments that these are awful. Well, they're awful if they don't work, but if they work, they're great. What I do with these is uh, I have them all over the place. Why? I do a lot of work on bikes, and generally, um, that's what you need right there. That's for a lot of things, you know, or maybe a smaller one. You need a four. And, and that's it for all kinds of stuff. Uh, and the handle is great. The torque value is, is under what you can easily do with something in this form. A lot of people said you got to have these. Well, in certain jobs, yeah, absolutely. That's why I have these. That's why I've got these. Um, but they also, like if you're doing work on precision stuff, that's a lot of mass to be moving around. This is inconvenient, you know, so then maybe what you want is just one of these. Um, this has so little mass at the top that it's easy to spin these. And, you know, I love those little tiny balls right there. Look at that thing. Cute. But anyway, so I think all of these have a place. They all belong. But this one, I think there is some serious room for improvement. Um, not that there's anything wrong with these, but there are some things I've noticed that you could easily, if you want to build your tools, easily get around. And the price of these things, if you think about it, I've got seven here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. So 14 of these things. Well, one snap-on might be about 13, 14 bucks, depending on what it is. And this whole set was 20 uh, with these trays for what that's worth. Um, and that allows me then to move these, which are are older still they still work but you can't really see that very easily you know there um, and uh, these now go down one more level into a, an area where they either might not come home they get left out they're vulnerable to be borrowed um, but they also um, are going to be useful still they're not being you know dismissed uh, a little bit aware on that but anyway that's why I have all of these um, they, as I've said in other videos, so much of my life is in hex and torques. That's where everything takes place, it seems. And having these convenient, having them well marked, having them, you know, of decent quality. They're not the best quality by any means. Um, I will use, I will go to the snap-ons if, if it's a real valuable fastener. Um, and then these are just pure convenience um, to have around because a lot of times uh, there's no clearance issues. Um, I, there's a bolt right there, you know, or some sort of fastener, especially on bicycles. Um, I've got teeny weeny ones. I've done videos on those just to have one handy. But the kind of the go-to shop style, uh, these are indispensable. But I really need to be able to see what they are, especially in the SAE, because um, I know it might be a one eighth, and I want to be able to see that, but I can't tell. What is that? I have to look up close, 5, 30 seconds, nope. You know, bit of a difference there. And for the price, because these are somewhat sacrificial. Anyway, let me know. T let's take this conversation beyond just the, the small uh, fold-up key sets. A lot of people love those, a lot of people love the T-handles, but also how could you redesign these? Because I imagine uh, that somebody's gonna do it and everyone will want that tool. Maybe it'll be the next big hit. Um, a brand new design uh, because there's, there's room for improvement. And with that, Doc out.